In today's video, I would like to show my viewers how I repair a buried coax line that has been cut or damaged due to digging. The typical coax line that is used is RG6, like you see right here, but the method you will see can also be used for RG8 by increasing the sizes of the metal tubing and heat shrink. Typically, to do this repair, you would require two coax connectors along with a coupler and some heat shrink tubing with glue. The cost of these materials would be around five or six dollars. For the same amount of money, I will show you how to make a better lower loss repair and have enough supplies left over for three more repairs. The repair when done properly will last many years and have no chance of water entering the repair area. All right, to get started, right here you can see where the line was cut. Right in through the foam and the braiding and the foil right down to the center conductor. Now if there's a lot of play in the line, if it's not buried really tight, then you're going to want to cut away the entire damaged area. If there is no play in the line, then what you're going to do is find the deep cut. Of course it may or may not go all the way through, but if it goes all the way through, cut clean through the line. To do the repair, you're going to need heat shrink tubing like this, six inches long with glue on the inside. If you do not have glue on the inside, you're definitely going to need to apply some sort of adhesive before you slide the tubing over the repair area and heat shrink it. So a six inch length of heat shrink, seven sixteenths diameter. You're going to need this tubing you see right here. This is made by K&S Metals. You can pick this tubing up at a hobby shop or a hardware store. It's usually available in a small rack. And this one here is stock number 130. It's 732 by .014, which is the thickness of the walls. You're only going to need a piece of tubing that's around 3 and 3 quarter inches long. When you cut the tubing using a Dremel with a cutoff wheel or a fine tooth hacksaw blade, you're going to have to make sure the end is reamed out. You can use a Phillips screwdriver to ensure that the end is all reamed out clean, or you can use a reamer to clean out the opening. Make sure both ends are done the same way. It only takes a few seconds to do each end. When you're done, Make sure there's nothing on the outside edge of the tubing that when you move your finger across it that it gets hung up. You don't want to feel anything. Take some sandpaper, 220 grit. Make sure that end is nice and smooth. Get the brass or the copper to shine nicely. Do the same on the other end. And this right here, this is ready to go. Put that there. That's the heat shrink tubing ready to go. The other tube that you're going to need is right here. This is a copper tube. It does not have to be copper. Both of these could be brass or both could be copper. It makes no difference. The tubing is 1 16th inch ID. Very small on the inside. And the outer diameter is 3 seconds of an inch. You're going to purchase the tubing in the exact same place. It comes in a three pack for around $2.25. You would have enough in this pack to do at least 12 to 15 repairs if you had to. You're going to cut a section off about two inches long. Both of the tubes are sold by the same company, K&S Metals. You can purchase it online or you can purchase it in a hardware store or a hobby shop. You're also going to need a very small piece of heat shrink, only about two inches long, to go over that section. To get started, we're going to take one of the ends that was cut where it was damaged. We're going to remove about one inch of the black jacket covering the braiding. Let's go to there. Push only hard enough to cut through the jacket. You do not want to cut through the mesh and then go down the line like that. 
this is going to be neatly peeled back. All right. Now this braiding and the aluminum foil on the outside of the foam, the two have continuity. They're connected together because they're in direct contact. That's the shielding. If the shielding is not kept the way it's supposed to be, you're going to have a signal loss. And that we're going to make sure does not happen, which you'll see in a minute. Pull open the braiding. Get everything nice and even all the way around. All right. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove about three quarters of an inch of that one inch. Go right down to the center conductor. Okay, twist it. Once that's removed, make sure there are no strands from the mesh that goes around the aluminum foil. Make sure there are no strands making their way to the center conductor. Make sure the foil is not going near the center conductor. You just want to see the foam with the center conductor coming out. Now this conductor here is not solid copper. It's copper clad. It's a steel wire with copper on the outside. It could actually be soldered, but in this case we're not going to be doing that. There's no reason to. The smaller tube is going to be used to repair the center conductor for the signal. You notice that's a little smaller. There's play in it. That's no good. You don't want that. Also make sure you ream the smaller tube out on both ends. You could probably get a utility knife point and just wiggle it around just to ensure that the end is not curved in. This one doesn't make a difference if the outside is slightly rough, so don't worry about it. The next thing you're going to do, very, very important, push this back. I'm going to make a zigzag pattern. This is going to be a much more secure connection than using the coax connectors. The coax connectors only have one spot where this wire would touch against. It would go in between two points like that, and that's all it would be touching. This one's going to be touching in three or four spots, as you'll see in a minute. Let me do this, and I'll show you up close what it looks like. You're going to want to zigzag the wire. All right. All right, you see the wire? That's the zigzag when it's completed. Now when this slides in the tube, it's going to be extremely tight. We're going to have one, two, three, four, at least five contact areas on just one side. So this will slide in. Let's push it a little bit. All right. This wire right now, probably I can put a 10 pound weight on it and you're not going to be pulling it out. That's how strong that's in there. Let's see right there. You can look right at it. So that's perfect, that connection right there. Like I said, make sure the foil is not draped over to go anywhere near the center conductor. You need to have nothing there except for the foam and the copper. Once this tube is in position tight, I'm going to be sliding the heat shrink over that tube. The only purpose of that heat shrink is to make sure that there's no chance of the center conductor coming in contact with the inner walls of this tube. Even without that heat shrink, it should never come in contact because it's in the center of the foam. But just to be safe, I always add a piece of heat shrink. Let me just make sure it goes down nicely. Perfect. That looks great. A copper opening for the other end of the wire to be inserted. This side here I already did to save time on the video. Peeled it back. The 
The next step, take the tubing, the larger one for the shielding, and we're going to slide that over, push it all the way down. You can see the tubing is all the way down to here, right where my fingernail is. If you look in this end, which is going to be very hard, the smaller copper tube, you don't want it flush. Make sure your heat shrink is slid over. Don't forget that because if you do all this work and you don't have heat shrink, the whole repair is worthless. Pull this back like the other one. This one is zigzag the same way. Now you're going to have to make sure the wire is pushed. The center one is pushed into the small copper tube. Once it's into the small copper tube, you're going to guide the larger tube over the foam insulation with the aluminum foil between the foil and the braiding. Push it all the way down until it goes into the jacket by three quarters of an inch to an inch and then you're set. All right, off camera, because I was able to look at the opening in the smaller tube, I slid this into position. You can see once that went into the smaller tube, the larger tube went between the jacket and the mesh to around my fingernail. Push it together. Make sure it's tight. Now you really don't need the braiding that's sticking out. You can actually cut that off because you have such good contact in the jacket with the foil and the braiding. But what I like to do, pull it forward. And I put one little piece of tape around here first before the heat shrink goes on. Just to keep it nice and flat. And it's also making contact with the metal again. You're not going to get a better shielding than you see right here, that's for sure. That's all you need. You're going to have the glue covering all this with the, with the heat shrink. Flatten this out. Center conductor is back together, isolated from the outside shielding. The shielding is all back together. Now you're going to slide your heat shrink tubing with the glue. Make sure it has glue. If you don't have glue, you better put some glue all over the section before you put the heat shrink tubing over it. Slide mine directly over that. All right. Make sure you feel the repair area. The repair area is right there, so I gotta slide it down more. Slide just a little bit more. All right. That's perfect. I'm going to heat this with the heat gun.
Okay, it's complete. All right, what I'm gonna do now is probe with my digital meter on a 20 meg ohm setting between the center conductor and the braiding to show you that the repair was perfect and there's no connection between the center conductor and the braiding. First, let's go from the center to the center. All right, there's continuity there. Let's go between the braiding and the braiding and continuity there. Now we're going to check from the center conductor to the braiding. Nothing. All right. And that's fine there. And that's fine there. This will be a trouble free, low loss connection for many years to come. This is a closer look at the repair. You'll see it's nice and flat. And as I said earlier, as long as there's glue underneath this heat shrink, it will not pull apart. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you for watching.